Hello, Assalamualaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And some more developments to be noted. Um, as we know, Zardari had declared himself the dawn of all dawns in Pakistan. He said, I am king, bow down to me. And that I shall, you know, own Pakistan. Although actually you're just the real tout of the US establishment. But okay, figuratively you will be the puppet head of Pakistan, fine, in your dreams. But anyway, so I mean he did a litmus test in Karachi as we all saw. That despite the fact that they actually lost the elections and very badly. But they still very openly, very blatantly... Um, put their own man and he was not even a qualified candidate forget qualification he was not even an elected candidate candidate so um, now they thought that they would go to Savat now you need to understand one thing about the northern areas the northern areas are deeply deeply um, connected with PTI which means that PTI has extremely deep roots there because it was PTI that united all those areas in its you know in its own wake um, as we know most of them were tribal areas and um, PTI uh, or should we basically say Imran Khan Imran Khan worked hard for those people so those people who have been basically apolitical and they have never really cared much uh, or trusted much, uh, you know, when it comes to the government and the governing bodies. <clears throat> Those people trusted Imran Khan enough so that basically, now you could say that these are his areas. So KPK, KPK is Imran Khan's area, Sawat, Naran, Kagan, you know, all these northern areas. He's worked a lot for them and the whole world is aware of it. It's on the record. So. Uh, so when Zardari thought that, you know, he could just, 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 you know, waltz into Sawat and have this humongous rally and, you know, stake his claim, um, it was a miserable failure for Bilawal. So Bilawal's entry there into Sawat, uh, even though they brought all their own PPP members and they thought that they would make a huge rally out of it and everything, but it came out to be a 100% failure um, as we know the northern areas people they do not give a hoot uh, you know about uh, these political figures you need to understand the northern areas are uh, themselves uh, they're made up of people who are very self-reliant and they can in that sense you can say that they're quite dangerous so Zardari may be dangerous in Sindh and Karachi but uh, his level of danger is nothing compared to the people of the north if they come down to it. Remember, they have a culture of uh, Kalashnikov. So that is a Kalashnikov culture over there. Yes, we could say it doesn't really pertain to Sivat, Naran, Kagan, because those places are essentially very, very peaceful areas. But still, at the end of the day, if you enter into KPK, if you try to create any fuss in any of the valleys that come under KPK, then you are in for the long haul when it comes to them um, breaking your ass off, in other words, okay? So Bilawal uh, went there thinking that because his father is the self-declared king, um, everybody would bow down. But again, let me remind you, this is not Sindh. Um, even Punjab does not bow down. So KPK is like another level, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're messing with the wrong people completely completely wrong people when it comes to kpk so yeah kpk's people do not give two hoots and they like they didn't even bother to show up to stone them even they were like okay you know what you're not even worth our time just go screw yourselves so that's basically the attitude of the people of kpk towards ppp it was literally go screw yourself so like how mariam basically addressed an empty lot in Baagh, Kashmir. Um, you could say the same went for Bilawal in Savat. On the other side, we've got Shabash Sharif, the cartoon of the century, you know, um, this cartoon character, wherever he goes, he just does his thing. Um, so Mr. Cartoon and uh, his niece and his son, you know, as usual, it's just these relatives you know, who think that they own Punjab. So they did some sort of a charade of elections in Punjab, which weren't even an election, really. I mean, all they did was just go there and talk about how Nawaz Sharif is going to come back. And then when he comes back, he's going to take over. 
first of all, Nawaz Sharif can never come back. Even if he does come back, he can never take over because he is disqualified. Okay, he's disqualified by the Supreme Court in that he can never enter into politics forever. And that is why he sent his mouthpiece, his daughter here after all. Why else would he be hiding there given refuge and protection by the British government whose spy he is? You know, why else would he be hiding there in England? I mean, common sense, my friends, common sense, which obviously is not common. But anyway, so the, the cartoons of Muslim League, uh, Nawaz group, they were standing there talking all this BS. And also, uh, Shubhash Sharif uh, declared that all those people who were against uh, es, uh, Ishaq Dar. Ishaq Dar is by far the worst economist in the history of not just Pakistan, but I think the whole damn world. I mean, every time this man comes, he always just screws the economy of the country. He just crushes the economy and his budgets are amazingly ridiculous. I mean, okay, so according to Shubhash if nobody should dare say a word against this honest man whose honesty is known to the world, right? Yeah, his honesty is known to the world. I can see that. The whole world can see that. Such an honest man. He's so honest that the only thing he's ever done every time he's ever come as finance minister is to cook the books. So yes, in that case, I guess when you call him an expert, an unrivaled expert in economy, an economist of the century, then yes, because I guess you really do have to be an expert in order to cook the books of a whole nation. Yes. So now he has a freaking problem because people within his own party, within the PMLN party, are beginning to scream at how pathetic, how ridiculous, and how useless his heart dark can be. Uh, because the whole world right now is is actually extremely peed off at Ishaq Dar's budget, which is nothing new, as I said, just throughout history. Every single time these people come into the government, just look at the budgets created by this man, and then look at always the reaction of the people every single time. I swear, if he is an economist, then I am definitely the queen of economy because even I know that the budget that he comes up with is extremely ridiculous okay it's redonkulous well anyway so the man because he's related to Shabash Sharif and Nawaz Sharif because they've exchanged their children with each other in holy matrimony so Shabash Sharif is just going crazy insane about you know don't you dare say anything to me well you know what fuck you okay fuck you and fuck him and who even wanted you people here you just bought yourselves seats I mean is there any one of you who actually is here on merit or on qualification no every single one of you have bought your way here and salute to the stupid establishment. I mean, how stupid and how pathetic can you be that you keep on falling on the same guys every single time? You know, you just keep on making the same freaking mistake every single time. The kudos to you people. Kudos to your stupidity. Seriously. And kudos to no, Shabashi's stupidity as well. Kudos to the Muslim League news stupidity that they also every single time fall for the trap laid out by Zardari. I swear, every single time they get together, like every single person in Pakistan would tell you that, okay, Zardari is just playing a game in which he's going to scapegoat them. And it happens every single time. And yet here they are once again, exactly at that same point, trapped by Zardari and they're going to be scapegoated. Seriously, how freaking stupid do you have to be, you know? I mean, no wonder Zardari comes out as, you know, a, a very talented a genius. <laughs> if you're dealing with stupid donkeys like these, I think everybody's a genius. Even I would be a genius. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's that situation there where Shabash Sharif has said, who dares talk against my family members? He's the hardest working people. She's the hardest working person. Sorry, I'm mixing up all my grammar and stuff because I'm going half insane. But anyway, the point is that he said that all those who have a problem with Ishaq Dar should leave the party. 
and those people who do have a problem with Isagdar are one of the oldest, some of the oldest members of the party, uh, and you bet your ass they're going to leave. Now, another pathetic move uh, by uh, Shubha Sharif uh, through Rana Sanaula, as we all predicted and we had already all mentioned, um, they are bringing in people who are claiming to be of PTI and seriously, not, not a single one of them are PTI members. They are all uh, PMLN members and they have been paid. They have been paid to make statements, to make false statements both on TV and you can see it very clearly in their faces, the way they're talking. If you're somebody who has incited violence or who has partaken in violence and you are made to confess, uh, both in front of the media and in front of the police, you would not sit there with such confidence. Um, you would not um, narrate a story as if you are talking about some scene that you enacted in a movie. And that is exactly how they've all, each and every one of them, they've talked. And that proves um, how the narrative was set, how it, the script was created and how they were made to learn that script and how they sort of, each and every one of them sort of embellished on that script. Not a single one of those people brought in front of the camera were PTI members. Each and every one of them lied about their identity and about their membership. They are essentially part of Nawaz Sharif's party. And even Etizaz Essen has proof of the fact that it is Nawaz Sharif's party that was in PDM, that was involved in the whole 9th May charade, the drama. And then even worse, even more pathetic, is on one side they're saying that Imran Khan was in their clutches. And on the other side, they're claiming that Imran Khan on the 8th of May called a meeting in which he said on that the next day on the 9th of May, you need to get this done. Are you seriously suggesting that? I mean, seriously, 8th May, Imran Khan was already arrested. Okay, he was already arrested. How can he call a meeting when he is arrested and the clutches of unknown unknown people why we're saying unknown because we have had the rangers and we have had special forces and we have had police officers and there were more than a hundred people there and they practically literally kidnapped the man okay they kidnapped imran khan in front of the whole world and they just took off with him a hundred people okay a hundred people from three different agencies and you're telling me that despite all of that, he managed to call a meeting? Are you seriously fucking with us right now? I mean, who the hell, again, I would ask, who the hell are you creating this script for? Because seriously, it's not going to help. Whoever you think is going to help, it's not going to help because whoever comes after all this narrative is created, that person is going to fall into a huge pit thanks to this very pathetic narrative that you've created. I mean, how stupid can you be? Or is it that you just don't care because at the end of the day, you've sold us out, you've sold the country out and America's got to step in any time just so that it can wage its stupid war against Russia, seriously? America has, may not have better things to do in life but wage wars all over the world because it's a warmongering state and that, that is its bread and butter. But seriously, we have got a hundred things to do in life than to cater to your stupidity. And just a few hours ago, there has been another uh, breaking news, I guess you can say, uh, that just took place. Um, firing was initiated um, at Latif Kosa's place. About seven shots were fired and his driver was injured. Now, the thing about Latif Kosa is he is a PPP member. That means he belongs to Zardari's party. He belongs to People's Party. But he's one of the old members, um, just like Etazaz Essen. And the two of them, uh, and also, uh, it, in case nobody knows, Latif Kosa is the former governor of Punjab. Okay? He is also a senior lawyer. And at the moment, he is one of the representatives also 
as we know the lawyers are united and they have been having meetings and conferences as to how the illegal government has violated the sanctity of law so um i think he was at a conference or something today and uh, it is said that it was in retaliation uh of his speech that uh, shots were fired against him and as we know these are warning shots which means the government is involved and that is why actually Etzaz Essen reached there and was very vocal now you need to remember Etzaz Essen is extremely vocal he is one of the most powerful uh veteran members of uh, people's party and he is also a lawyer and he has also been extremely vocal against the the current antics of the of the illegal government and of the violations that they have um uh the the violations of the government against constitution and against judiciary um and against state so um the two of them have been extremely vocal in, against all these violations and Etzaz Essen has very openly named names uh, including Rana Sanaullah he has openly named names of the various people who are part of the illegal government of uh, Punjab and he has said that they are behind it as we know another senior advocate's uh, home was terrorized in the in a similar fashion uh, recently um shots were fired outside of his home and again the police did nothing obviously because it is the police who are doing everything i mean come on it's it's always it's the government who's behind it all so obviously it's the police and the intelligence agencies that are always behind such things um so even now etzaz essen has um, has in minced words while naming names very openly and he has said that because Latif Khosa has been very vocal against the antics uh of the government and the illegal activities of the government um this is why um he was threatened um and now let's see what exactly is going to happen i mean uh, is the government now going to try and attack uh, etzaz essen in return by prompting some fabricated uh, crime against him as well but but as i said um there is one thing i have found to date um that the punjab government even would have to think twice before they lay a hand on etzaz essen because i think he is a man who is quite intimidating in his own right quite powerful in his own right um and he is not someone that you can so easily mess with that is why most of the time they just let him be even people parties uh people's parties own members uh i think uh are extremely cautious and careful in front of him um he is somebody who calls a spade a spade and he is somebody who just does not like people messing with him so i don't think it if the if if this punjab government really uh you know if it really treasures its existence it would not mess with it as 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 i mean that is what i would advise them imran khan they think imran khan is tough imagine if they had to deal with etzaz essen and imran khan they're already losing to imran khan who is who is like a rock now imagine that rock two times they'll be screwed to death so as to the question regarding if the princess is going to bow down to the king or are they going to fight are the dogs going to fight over their turf so i the answer is here according to sources the dogs are fighting over the turf so according to sources and according to certain journalists and their sources um it has been said that um, the noon league people the nawaz sharif party people which means shabash sharif basically because it's the family is all in all there's nobody else just like how in this people's party now is just zardari and his family and nobody else so they have 
they are trying to work with the army as we know as we know zardari is working against the army um he is telling everybody that he is even more powerful than the army which in a way he is because when he was president after all he presided over it all and he's the one who made all these constitutional changes that are that are right now the reasons why the the present uh, president has nothing no power uh because zardari one of the main things that he did when he came into power as president was to dismantle the the power of the president especially the power to dissolve assemblies and he gave most of the power to provincial assemblies so that if, if because his main idea or main point is that the in the future the each each province is going to be independent in some form or the other and so provincial assemblies should be given more power than the actual federal government right so the national assembly so right now there's a turf war going on uh, it has started as in so Sh- shabash sharif is basically working with the army to uh, literally literally and these are his words which i'm going to translate in as best as i can and that is that they want to shove ppp back to where it crawled out from and they want to completely destroy ppp in the process as in they want to destroy people's party right when i say ppp that's people's party when i say pmln or non ligi that is nawashif's party so that is what is going on so they are telling the the army that we will pass anything you want us to pass we'll give you all the powers you need um you can start your military courts you can you know abuse your authority uh through the military act which by the way is one of the uh conditions placed in the petition that was first uh placed by Imran Khan and then it is now the same petition is placed by Zaz Essen and three to four other lawyers and including a civilian um as or should i say the civil committee yeah i think it's called the civil committee i'm sorry if i'm wrong here uh basically what they do is that they deal with civilian rights and they talk about the legal aspect which is where they come in when they say that it is illegal for civilians to be tried in military courts and that is part of the petition as well that was laid out by uh Imran Khan and again the exact same petition is being laid out by the the lawyers uh and Etzaz Essen who himself obviously is a lawyer as well um and he uh the they're not just lawyers we call them lawyers but actually they these are barristers most of them so the thing is that basically they have all put in the same petition which is to um for the supreme court now to basically declare a uh, military act illegal the 1974 uh act illegal uh because that was all according to them that would pertain to a dictatorship and because it's a democracy so that should all be cancelled out and it should be uh, removed from the system from the constitution and an illegal aspect it should be declared as unconstitutional and illegal um and at the same time uh, many such points are put forward but um because this ninth may charade uh, had you know given them the excuse to abuse their authority and bring in the military act and again that was because shubhash sharif wanted to stay in power as we know shubhash sharif has been hiding in the dicky of the cars even during imran khan's tenure visiting the uh, chief of army staff at that time who was bajwa so that he could strike a deal with bajwa that okay you make me prime minister and i'll give you extension by the way bajwa how did that go for you you stabbed imran khan in the back just so that you could get an extension and you struck a deal with the traitors and you put the country in this mess but you still didn't get your extension so how is that going for you anyway uh so shubhash sharif right now is striking a deal with the current chief of army staff was obviously his own person because he's the one who picked him and put him where he is and that this is again uh, what they always do so he is right now striking this deal that okay you just abuse your power abuse your authority um do uh, deal it with it as an unofficial dictatorship but i have to be the head and i my party has to remain in power and in the meantime you need to destroy 
um, Zardari and his power. And you need to wipe that grin off of his face. Yeah, these are his words. You need to wipe that grin off of his face. Zardari's famous grin, as we know, he always grins like a Cheshire cat, you know. He's like, you know, <laughs> every time you see him. So that's where it's coming from. So the dogs have begun to fight, but seriously, you actually thought you can take on Zardari. That guy always puts you in a trap. You always fall for that trap. You're such pathetic losers. He is a pathetic loser too, but he is definitely at a level that's higher than yours. There's only one person who can deal with all of you, and that is Imran Khan. And that is why it took 13 parties, 13 parties to oust the man, and they still couldn't get rid of him. You're such a pack of losers. In fact, here's a point to note um, before I digress any further, and that is that it is us Essen, because remember, he's not just a lawyer, but he's also a lawyer who, who is an expert in constitutional law. Okay, that is his niche. So um, he has reminded the court in his petition that the military courts um, basically ended in 2019 that special provision that was given to them because of the ABS incident um, that ended in 2019 and as per law they can no longer exist or re-establish military courts especially with 9th May so according to him according to the Constitution and according to the law um, military courts cannot be established to uh, and in order to investigate or put to trial anybody with regards to 9th May because that is already uh, it was already over as in it was the end had already happened in 2019 after which there was no other provision or act that allowed military courts to reopen or to uh, take charge or to establish themselves so basically they have no there is no law or constitution that allows military courts to be established for this incident or this event. Um, I think after facing enough humiliation, thanks to this government, the Advocate uh, General of Punjab, uh, I'll just call his last name, Mr. Gul, uh, he has also resigned. Uh, well, thank you for having some conscience. You took your sweet time, though. Um, after all, when you know when he keeps on going to the court with their stupid, pathetic cases, and then the, the 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 Supreme Court and the others keep on asking him, "What the hell are you doing?" You know, and the fact that he always has to you know um, uh, make excuses or justify the claims that he has to put forward on the behest of the government or on behalf of the government, I think he has finally uh, had it and uh, he's finally decided that okay that's it i'm fed up till here well thank you very much again i would say you took your sweet time but yes as we know some major players in the government are leaving as well because as i said uh, those who have a conscience cannot let this go on for long because they are now getting too humiliated their kids are probably getting humiliated as sairavan also pointed out she's like you know we as parents too don't make us too ashamed don't make our children be ashamed because when they when they go to schools other children go to those schools as well and those children have questions you know as to what are your parents doing so you know this is this is also a point that i i'm trying to make which i've been trying to make even before there are certain people who keep on saying that you know they have instilled fear amongst the people of pakistan and you know as i said before the people of pakistan are not scared okay they're not scared um they are confused. You know, when, when Imran Khan was ousted, the people, they were just boiling over and they were just going to flood the streets. But Imran Khan put a break on that, you see? What happened is that Imran Khan put a break on that. If he didn't do that, we wouldn't be here today, very frankly speaking. He was trying to avoid a violence, but that violence was exactly what the government wanted to, to initiate and if we had flooded the streets at that point the government would have been paralyzed they wouldn't have had the chance to do all that they're doing right, right now so basically the people are confused they are thinking of how to just break this government down 
how to remove them all, how to basically kill them all, okay? That's really what the people are th- The people are literally thinking of how to effectively just kill every single one of these people right now in the government and in the army and in the establishment. And let's be very honest here, okay? Uh, that is exactly what the people are thinking. They are thinking of how to just burn them all down to the ground and get rid of them all once and for all. So the people are confused as to what is the most effective strategy of stopping these people and there is only one strategy which i keep on and on saying there is only one strategy flood the streets shut the country down overseas pakistanis don't you dare send a cent not even to your relatives the day your relatives will begin to simmer in anger you know when they'll get when they'll find out that they're not getting a cent from you when they when life will become harder for them for, uh, you know that's when they'll get peed off and that's when they'll get up as long as you're sending a few dollars and a few pounds here and there to your family members, they're thinking that, oh, well, you know, as long as, okay, we're managing, we're managing, okay, we're managing, things are not too bad, we're managing, you know, they won't get out. So put them in the condition, put them in the situation where they should be forced to get out. That's all I can say. So after the chairman of NAB and then the chairman of Nadra, now we have the advocate general uh, of Punjab who has resigned and each and every one of them have made basically the same statements they said it's so toxic it's uh they're politicizing our organizations to a huge extent we can't do our jobs there's no merit it's us versus them um and we cannot work in such a situation we if the the day the minute we refuse to do their bidding um which has no logic or no legal claim um they start getting personal with us and we can no longer bear this situation or this condition anymore yeah i bet you now really miss imran khan don't you i bet you do until there are more developments and updates this is me signing out for the hafiz